In this video, we're going to go through utilizing some corridors and feature lines to help us grade in curb and gutter around our parking lot here and, and keeping it in a way that it will be interactive for any changes that we may make throughout our design process. A quick tour of what we have is we have a temporary surface here with these gray lines that we're using to help maintain elevation and design of this feature line, which is set to be relative to its surface, as well as this one. And then we have a design surface sitting on top of it. If you need to know how to create these relative features, I encourage you to watch our relative feature line video on the grading playlist. And what we're want, going to want to do is we're going to push a corridor around this feature line with curb and gutter. And we're going to add it to our surface and it will all be interactive and tied together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create a corridor. Before I do that, let me select set feature line and I'm going to go to my elevation editor. <clears throat> I'm going to come up here to station zero and I can see station zero is here and I'm just going to click up station so I can see that this corridor is rotating counterclockwise. So that's important to know because it will affect my assembly. So I'm going counterclockwise and if this is my edge of pavement, my curb and gutter will be to the right. So we want to know that. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and create our corridor. So I'm going to go to home, corridor, and corridor. I'm going to give it a name. Choose whatever style that you want. But down here, I'm going to choose feature line. And I'm going to use this pick box to choose that feature line. And it's got my site and my feature line. And I do not have an assembly right now. And I'm going to hit OK. And now I have an empty corridor over here. Now, remembering that our corridor is going counterclockwise and I want curb and gutter to be to the right of said line, I can now make my assembly. So I'm going to choose assembly. I'm going to choose over here, space, create assembly, give it a name. I'm going to call it CNG for curb and gutter and choose whatever styles that you want it to use and place it. Now that I've got that, I'm going to go to my sub assemblies and under curves, I'm going to choose urban curb and gutter general. Now before I place it, I'm going to right click and say help to open the help dialog box. And this is going to show me what these dimensions are so that I can be able to modify them as I need it. So once again, I'm going to click this. Try that again. It didn't activate. Click that. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and just place it. Adjust it after I place it. All right, so now that it's in here and it's to the right, we'll select it and here's all those dimensions that we were looking at earlier. So dimension A is this face depth. B is the width of our gutter. So I'm gonna focus on B, D, and F for the moment. So B, I want to have a 18 inch gutter. I want it six inches high and I want it six inches back. So B, D, and F. So B, let's say 18 inches. D is my height, so it's six inches. And F is six inches thick. And if you want to adjust the thickness of this, you can. A was seven inches, so I'm just gonna leave it for purposes demo and leave it all alone. The thickness of this sub base is uh there's an extension dimension and a sub base dimension so let's come over here our gutter slope i'm going to put it negative eight percent i'm going to put our sub base thickness at zero and our extension at zero just because i don't want it for the purposes of this demo now that i've got that i've got an assembly and i'm ready to rock and roll so we're going to put start with this one and then we'll come in and add our sidewalk later just for this demo now that I've got it, let's come over here and I'm going to right click on our corridor, go to properties, go to parameters. Now you can do all your editing in here or if I can select it, it's a little hard to select the feature, the corridor when you have no assemblies on it. Let's see if, I, if it will let me select it. It'll change your contextual ribbon. You can go to corridor properties here or you can add regions. I'm going to add a region. And I am going to say, do the entire region using the assembly C and G and hit OK. 
and uh, I'm going to leave my targets alone for the moment. And here I have a, a corridor. And now that I've got a corridor in here, if I come over here and add, open a second view, tilt this over in 3D, we can see that it followed our feature line and our feature line is tied to our surface but we haven't added it to our surface yet so now that we have a corridor i'm going to extract corridor feature lines i'm going to select the corridor right click and um, actually let's come over here to the home tab and do feature lines feature lines from corridor it's going to ask you to select the corridor and I am going to hit enter to open up dialog box I want my back a curve my flange my flow line and my top I want all of them so I'm going to hit extract and now you see these lines in here you can see them drawn over here as well and now I can add these to my surface so I will add these three here to my surface. I'm going to right click, add surface break lines, my design surface, give them a name, and I'm going to call it curb auto corridor feature line and hit OK. And you can see that it added triangulation here for our surface. And if I edit my temp surface, it will move the feature line. If the feature line moves, the corridor will update. To test that, let's come over here. I want to set my corridor to automatically rebuild. And I'm going to set my surface to automatically rebuild if it's not already. And now let's tweak our design, sur our uh, topo surface. So I'm going to, first of all, turn this off. Just a little less to have to look at. And now let's take this feature line and let's raise it by a foot. So let's select that, and I'm going to raise by an increment of a foot. And um, hit checkbox. I should set this to automatically rebuild as well. That's going to rebuild, that rebuilt, that rebuilt, and so the corridor rebuilt all together. So now if I lower it by two feet, you can see how it's automatically updating everything on the fly. See how it's all updating. So now, what if we want to add our sidewalk? Let's remember we said we wanted to add a sidewalk. In order to do that, we need to create some more regions. So I'm going to select my corridor. I'm going to right click and go to modify region and split region. It's going to ask me to select the region I wish to split. I only have one right now, so I'm going to click here. And then where do you want to split it? Now, regrettably, this parking lot has perfect 90s, and sometimes snapping to here might not work. So I'm, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go just ever so slightly past it. And you can see that I've broken that region. Now, we only want sidewalk on the right, so I've got to do that again. So I'm going to choose. Still on the command, I'm going to select this region now, and I'm going to split it just before the 90. So now I have three regions. Now that I've got three regions, we need to add us a subassembly or another assembly that's got us a sidewalk. So let's maximize this view real fast. I'm going to come over here to our assembly that we've already got started, and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to right click and copy, copy that over here and give it a new name. And let's add a sidewalk. I'm going to add the urban sidewalk subassembly, hook it to this point. And uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to set it at five foot wide and a cross slope of zero. And I'm going to leave it at four inches thick, just so that it's there. So now that we've got another assembly, I'm going to change my assembly for this region that we just made. So I'm going to select my corridor, right click, modify region, 
whoops. And let's go to region properties and click inside the region we want to edit. And I am going to change my assembly to our sidewalk assembly. So there's a sidewalk. <clears throat> so now we've got a curve and gutter that's tied to a corridor. We've got our sidewalk that's tied to our curve and gutter. And now our last thing we want to do for this outside is let's add a, um, a curb break. So I'm going to mark the middle of my parking lot for the purposes of this video. So I'm going to do midway between two points. Between there and there. Right there. So we want that to be the middle of our um, ramp, our curb break. So we said it's five foot offset. So I'm going to do two and a half feet each way. Just doing me some marker lines. And let's say a one to 12 transition. So a six foot tall, six inches tall, that would be six feet. So let's offset that six feet here and here. So I'm going to have a transition down to a zero height curb across this area and then transition back up to a full height curb to this point. Now in 2023 and beyond, adding transitions. Uh, to uh, subassembly components is pretty easy. I'm going to select the corridor and I'm going to go to edit corridor transitions. And now that I'm in here, I'm going to, it's already asked me to choose a subassembly. So I'm going to click here and uh, remember that our height is D. So I'm going to choose D. And now it's saying, where do I want to start my transition? Now we've got our marker lines here. So I'm going to say from here. And it's starting at six. I want the end of my transition, my end station to be right here. Uh oh. Enter parameter. Oh, it's one of my parameters. So six inches tall. In station. Right here. Parameter. And I'm going to put it just ever so slightly above zero. So I'm going to put point zero 0.01. And hit enter. Linear transition. And if you don't exit out of command, it'll just keep building. So what's the in station of my... Select the in station for the next transition. So we're going to go to right here. And I want my parameter to be the same, so almost zero, linear. And now for our last one, right here, and back to six inches tall. I'm going to hit enter to get completely out of the command. So you can see here in the dialog box how I stack those together. So when I hit apply, it automatically added these drops and it added the transitions as well. So if I close the dialog box, those blue lines will disappear. And if I um, open our second view up and come over here and tilt this up, and switch to shades of gray. I can see it transitioned, and because the sidewalk was tied to it, it transitioned the sidewalk down as well. So I've got my curb break and my sidewalk right there. So, and now that's all tied. So if this feature line moves, these transitions will hold, and the sidewalk transitioned as well, and it's all intelligent, and ultimately all being controlled by this in the background, by this temporary surface. Real quick, we'll just add one more baseline to our corridor, and we'll do this island. So let's go over here. I'm going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, select the corridor, and I am going to add a baseline. So add a baseline of a feature line. Let's choose this one. And now I checked this already. I know it is going counterclockwise as well. So I should be able to use my same assembly. And now that I've got that baseline, I can select the corridor. I prefer, once I get two baselines, I'll just choose this one and go to properties. So here's our other baseline. 
let's uh, right click on it and add a region. We're going to use our curve and gutter. And if you do that, it'll automatically do the full length. And uh, let's hit OK. And close. Rebuild. And now I've got my uh, corridor, so we will select it. Whoop. We'll go to Home, Feature Lines, Corridor, Feature Lines, select our this baseline, hit Enter, hit Extract, and here they are. And uh, I actually should have done this in the opposite direction. So now I've got my curve and gutter backwards, which regrettably means I'm going to have to make another assembly or I can reverse that curl, that um, feature line. But it's pretty quick to make it changes like that. So um, I change this to left side, just that easy. Give it a name. Then I'll just come over here to this region and modify its properties and change assembly to left. And you can see that it's repushed that. So now we'll extract our corridor feature lines and add them to our surface. We'll just do all of them. And then we will add these three. And you can edit the frequency as needed for whatever you're doing. And you can see I've got a nice island here in my surface now. So that's it for this video. If you got any questions or comments, please leave them below and feel free to like or subscribe.